Hi everyone, welcome to this video where we will explore how to use CSV file to create and manage families in Revit. If you ever felt overwhelmed by creating multiple family types manually, this video is for you. By the end of this tutorial, you will know how to use CSV files to save time and make your own workflow more efficient. Let's dive in. First, let's talk about the structure of the CSV file. CSV stands for comma separated values and it's basically a text file that stores the data in the table format. In Revit, a CSV file is used to define parameters for your families. Here is how it works. The columns represent the parameters like length, width or material and the row represent different family types or configurations. For example, if you are creating a door family, your CSV might have columns for width height and material, and each row would define a specific door type, like a 36 inch door or a 42 inch door. Remember, the first row is always the header row, which defines the parameter's name. These names must match exactly with the parameters in your Revit family. Also avoid spaces in the headers. Use underscores or camel case instead. Now let's talk about the two main ways to use CSV files in Revit. CSV lookup and CSV type. With CSV lookup you can map data from your CSV file to parameters in your Revit family. This is great for creating multiple family types with shared parameters. For example, you could use a CSV lookup table to create different size of windows while keeping the same type. On the other hand, CSV type allows you to define family types directly from the CSV file. This is useful when you want to create families with unique configurations like doors with different width, height and materials. So which one should you use? If you need flexibility and shared parameters, go for CSV lookup. If you want to create entire new family types, CSV type is the way to go. Before you start working with CSV file in Revit, there are a few things you need to keep in mind. Parameter names. Make sure that parameter names in your CSV file match exactly with those in your Revit family. Even a small tupa can cause error. This is applicable only for CSV type base. When it comes to CSV lookup value table, it's not that important. The main aim is to ensure that the property name is clear enough to match it with the property name in the family itself. Data types. Ensure that the data in your CSV file matches the data type in Revit. For example, if a parameter is number in Revit, don't enter text in the CSV. Units. Double check that the units in your CSV file match your Revit project units. For example, if your Revit project uses millimeters, make sure your CSV file also uses millimeters. File location. Keep your CSV file in the content location. If you move or rename the file, Revit won't be able to find it. Backup. Always backup your Revit families and CSV files before making changes. This will save you a lot of headache if something goes wrong. For support materials, you can always refer to official Autodesk website where they have a lot of support information. Now you might be wondering, should I use Excel or CSV? Here is the deal. Excel is great for editing and organizing your data. It's easy to use and you can visualize your data better. However, when you are done, you will need to save your file as a CSV for Revit to read it. CSV files, on other hand, are lightweight and universally compatible, but they can be tricky to edit directly especially if you are not used to work with plain text files. My advice, use Excel for editing, but always save your file as a CSV before importing it into Revit. And remember not to use formulas in your CSV. Sometimes things don't go as planned. If you run into issues while importing your CSV file, here are some common problems and how to fix them. If Revit cannot find your CSV file, make sure it hasn't been moved or renamed. Check for tuples or extra spaces in your parameter names. Make sure that the data in your CSV matches the data type in Revit. Remove any empty rows and columns in your CSV file, then they can cause errors. Try to avoid commas because Revit considers them as a separator even if it's just a number value. Advice that, you can, that I can give you, if you are still stuck, try testing with a small CSV files first. This will help you 
identify the issue without getting overwhelmed. Now that we have covered the basics, let's dive into two practical use cases for CSV file based families in Revit. We will start with a simple wall based door family, create two copies of it and then use one for a CSV type family and the other for a CSV local family. By the end of this demonstration you will see how each method works and when to use them. Let's get started. First, we will create the base geometry for our door family and here is how. Start by adding three reference planes to define the width and height of the door. Assign labels to the dimensions, one for width, one for height and next add two text properties, one for name and one for material. Once the geometry and parameters are set up, we will save this family twice. One copy as a CSV type family, another copy as a CSV lookup family. This will allow us to demonstrate both methods using the same based family. Let's start with the CSV type family. Here is how it works. Open the family and create one initial type. Export this type into a txt file, even though it's a txt file, the structure is still comma separated values, so that's why I was calling it as a CSV file. Open the txt file in the Excel and add two more door types, for example 32 inch door and 42 inch door. Once you have added the new types, save the file, but before importing it back into the Revit, make sure to replace tabs with commas, remove any extra dots or formatting issues. Now import the updated file back into the family. As you can see, Revit has created two extra types based on the data in the CSV file. This is the power of CSV type families. You can quickly generate multiple family types without manually creating each one. Next, let's update the CSV lookup family and here's how it works. Start with the same txt file we used for the CSV type family, but made a slight change. Remove one column and save it as a CSV. Now go back to the family and create an extra text property for the lookup table search. This property will help Revit find the correct values in the CSV file. Change the property type from type to instance and here is why. Type properties are linked to the entire family type and won't work with lookup tables. Instance properties can be edited directly in the project and are specific for each instance of the family. Import the updated CSV file and define the values using this size lookup function. This function tells Revit how to map the data from the CSV file to the family parameters. Finally, change the value for a search property, in this case width, and see how family updates automatically. This is the main difference between CSV type and CSV lookup families. CSV type is great for creating multiple family types and CSV lookup is ideal for updating instance specific properties without affecting the entire family type. Now let's test both families in a Revit project to see how they work. For the CSV type family you will see that each door type has its own of parameters like width and height. You can easily switch between types and the parameters will update accordingly. For the CSV lookup family, you can adjust the width of each door instance independently and the material or other properties will update based on the CSV file. This flexibility makes CSV file based families a powerful tool for managing complex designs efficiently. And that's it! You've just created a Revit family using a CSV file. Thanks for watching. Today we covered everything you need to know to get started with CSV file based families in Revit. From understanding the CSV structure to troubleshooting common issues, you are now ready to take your Revit skills to the next level. If you found this video helpful, don't forget like, comment and subscribe for more Revit tips and tutorials. And if you are having any questions, drop them in comments below. I would love to help. Thank you for watching and see you next time.